Hi guys, welcome to the channel. I'm Reforger and this is the Halo Ultimate Scale Series Warhog. If you had to pick any one vehicle to take away from Halo, I think the Warthog would be that vehicle. In any of the games, the first vehicle that you get to drive is the Warthog. So when starting to build mocks of Halo vehicles, you just have to start with the Warthog. It is the vehicle. What's quite funny about the Warthog is it's so iconic to the Halo franchise, and yet it is essentially just a pickup truck with a gun on the back. I think you can tell that Bungie were influenced by the mobility vehicle in the US Army at the time, which is the Humvee. But even though the Warthog carries a lot less people, it dwarfs the Humvee. I mean look at this comparison here, it doesn't even have any doors. And the comparison is even more stark against this tentacle here. Sure, it doesn't have the front and rear steering or the suspension, but the Warthog is like twice the size. It's pretty impressive to think that Bungie nailed the look of the Warthog straight off the bat with Halo Combat Evolved. I mean, if you just look at the vehicle, it just really hasn't changed until 343 messed with the aesthetic of it. I mean, sure, you could say that in every iteration from CE to Reach, you know, bits of detail were added, etc. But to me it always just seemed that when they got more graphical fidelity they just used it to flesh out the model rather than completely just change everything. So with Halo 4, 343 added the M12B variant and that's the variant that we see in all the 343 games. For this video we're just not considering that version. I do actually kind of like the new version but it's still a shame that it lost its angular look and its very unique suspension system and it's just not really anywhere near as iconic as the original. Anyway, let's move on to looking at the features of this mock. So obviously the Warthog is fully figure compatible. The driver side even has an adjustable steering column so that allows for figures to more easily be placed in and out of the Warthog. The suspension on this model is actually sprung using some elastic bands across the arms. It's not perfect and it doesn't go far but it does the job. It also comes with front and rear steering just like the Warthog does in the game. So this is done by linking both the left and the right wheels at each end of the model using a steering arm. This just adds another level of dynamicism to the model and it makes it just feel a lot more alive. It does come with a trade off though, it means that you lose the separate left right suspension at each end. You can obviously take the turret off or you can just swap it out for different turrets. The rear section also has its own completely separate sub-assembly. The idea behind this is that if you want to have say a troop transport back you can just relatively quickly swap out a pre-made one preventing you from having to own like 12 different types of Warthog variant. So this is actually my third Warthog mock that I've made. I personally believe in the idea of iterative design you try one idea out and then you see what works, you see what doesn't and then you start again taking what you've learnt from the last model and try and take it to the next one. So this is the previous iteration of my model. So I've personally thought that in the past all the models ended up just coming out a bit thin. So the first thing that I did with this design was to widen it by a stud. This does make the Warthog look more proportioned but can also lead to building challenges like trying to get an evenly studded windshield onto the body that has an odd number of studs. I found that one of the hardest things about trying to recreate the look of the Warthog is moulding the front. You really have to get the angles just right, otherwise it just ends up looking like a generic Jeep. With this iteration, I just tried using wind tiles to try and form the angles at the front. As you can see though, it just really didn't end up looking the way it should end up looking. It just elongated the front too much and then that just threw the proportions of the model way off. This was actually the version that I introduced the steering mechanism on and it hasn't actually changed at all. The only major difference in this area is that I hadn't actually integrated the elastic bands yet. So although the suspension arms worked, they weren't sprung. So now you've seen the old version, let's go back and have a look at the new version again. The front of the new version is massively improved. It just looks so, so much closer to the in-game design. So rather than going with tiles, I've used a snot technique combined with angle adapters at the front to curve the front over. This does come with the downside of the vehicle looking a little bit chunky when looking at it from eye level, but when it's viewed from above, it just looks so close to the in-game model. I'm really, really happy with the way it's turned out. I actually decided to use the tusks from the OG first generation Warthog. 
there's just something about them that just look a little bit more authentic than the new pieces that Mega use. The midsection of the model is actually heavily designed off the previous version. So in all of Mega's Warthogs, they typically have this piece that usually goes behind the windshield. I've decided not to use that here, as it prevents you from including any form of detail into the dash section of the model. So not using that piece has allowed me to put in an adjustable steering column, along with just a few more details such as dials and gauges, etc. The central armrest area could be more accurate. It's actually sloping the wrong way. It was just necessary at the time to construct it in this way to ensure that the model would stay relatively sturdy, but it is something that I would like to look at in the future. So now that the rear is its own sub-assembly, the design has had to be completely changed. I think that it turned out pretty well. I'm especially a fan of the back section, the lights and the, the moulding from the bottom with the bumper. The only thing that I would be tempted to change is the bed. I think that if you could reduce the thickness of the bed by about a plate, then that would allow it to look just a bit more proportioned. So last but not least, the underside. The underside is relatively well detailed. The middle section is the most visible and it is accordingly the most detailed. The front section is fine, but there's not a lot of detail to be seen there anyway. And the rear section could do with a little bit of improvement as you have a few bits of reverse plate showing at the bottom. In terms of construction, I'd say that the model is relatively sturdy. It's obviously not as sturdy as a Mega Set would be, but at the same time you can handle the model, you can manipulate it without the whole thing just falling apart. With that said though, there are a few elements where if you accidentally touch it or push it, you can push them out of place. I've also built a second one. Considering just how iconic the Warthog is, I feel like I really needed to have two, so I just decided to build another one. It's pretty safe to say that the Warthog is Mega's most made Halo set, so we've got quite a few official sets to compare the model to. So if we start at the beginning, we're looking at the very first Warthog Halo set. Now it was really cool at the time to get an official set, but nowadays though it would be safe to say that it has been surpassed. So I think that the Rocket Hog was actually a high point in terms of M12 Warthog design for Mega. It might have been ever so slightly too thin, but the colour was absolutely on point, and the rest of the model was just so much more detailed from the other ones that we'd seen before. Now if we jump forward to the Arctic Warthog and the Warthog Run design, whilst the set looks cool, and the figures especially look really cool in this set, I can't help but feel that this Warthog is actually a slight step back. The sides especially just look wrong, and I think the rear has been shortened as well, and it looks like the design has more or less been carried forward into the Red Team Charge set. Now I don't actually own either of these sets, but from just looking at the pictures, I just think they look like a step back. I also feel that the general colour of the sets have gone in a backwards direction as well. I'm personally a big fan of the Dark Sage that was used in the Halo Reach era of sets especially. I feel like with the new green, they were trying to represent the Halo CE to 3 style of the UNSC colour scheme. And whilst I'd actually be all for that, I think that this green colour has actually come out oversaturated and it just doesn't make the vehicles look quite as believable as the old green used to. Overall though, I have to say I'm pretty happy with how this model has turned out. There are definitely a few points that I would like to improve and adjust going into the future, but for now this is just fine for me, and I think I'd rather spend more time and attention looking into other sets and trying to improve other vehicles. But what about you guys? What do you think? Would you like to see a Warthog like this in a future Mega set? Or do you think that Mega has done a better job than I have? Anyway, that's all I have for this video, but I do have a fair few more models already made up, so if you'd be interested in seeing some other models, please subscribe. That's all I have for today, I'm Reforger, and I'll see you next time.